In this presentation, we will calculate the present value of cash flows for bonds using tables. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. There's a few different ways we can do this and it's important just to know what the different ways are so we know how we can do it in different settings and know what other people are doing when we're in essence getting to the same point with different methods. Tables are very useful if we are in a situation where we are having test situations because often tests will allow us to have a calculator but a very simplified calculator that doesn't allow us to use present value functions and uh, the table will allow us some kind of in-between zone so we don't have to do the actual math of the formula but we don't get to use the, the calculator as well and so we do the, the table so just note that it's the same thing in practice of course you would probably use a calculator or excel so we'll show how to do that you want to know you know <laughs> that we're doing the same thing with these different methods and uh, use the tools that are available to us uh, whenever whenever we're doing these different methods so here we're just going to use the tables to do uh, the same type of calculation that we saw uh, in terms of a math calculation and that is here's our information we've got the bond and it's a face amount 100,000 stated rate uh, the rate on the bond 8% the market rate the rate uh, that's not on the bond that we think is just the market rate is 10% uh, semi-annual payments and there's uh, two years so that means there's gonna be four payments because we pay uh, every six months or twice a year and there's two years so the cash flows we know that the cash flows are gonna be a hundred thousand at the end and we know that there's gonna be interest payments of 100,000 times 0 0.08 that would be for a year divided by two four thousand so we're gonna make four two 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 years two times a year four four thousand dollar payments or times four sixteen thousand dollars worth plus the one hundred thousand that we're gonna pay back at the end so the total cash flow we know is one hundred and sixteen thousand but that's not present value cash flows because all those happen in the future there's two components to the cash flows remember one and this is why we love bonds so much when we talk about cash flows because there's one cash flow that's just a lump sum at the end and one cash flow, which is that annuity, which gives us an, a good way to use our two types of tables and formulas for cash flow. So we always want to think of that separately. If I want to present value this, first I'm going to present value the 100 that we're going to get at the end, and then present value the, the annuity. So let's do that first. We're going to say first we're going to take the present value PV of 1. That's kind of like the table name we can call it. And we're going to take the face amount of the bond. So we're going to take the bond face amount and that's going to be the 100,000 and all we have to do then is find the correct you know number from the table to uh, plug into here to figure out what uh, what we should be multiplying by and that's it so the difficult thing is one finding the correct table and two uh, just making sure we're using the right percentages to look at it tables look intimidating but if we know how to do that we're okay there's gonna be a, like four tables that they may give you here, when dealing with bonds, we want to use present value tables. So anything that says future value, we can eliminate those. We're not looking for future value. That typically brings us to two tables that have a present value. And we call it present value of one or present value of an annuity, typically. And if you look at the tables, you can kind of tell. You can say, well, hmm, if I'm talking about present value of one, for example, I need to multiply this 100,000 times something less than 1 because I know the answer is going to be something less than 100,000. So if you look at a table here, you can say, hmm, well, all these are less than 1. That looks like the right table. Whereas if I look at the table for an annuity, they all are over 1. So that doesn't look right. That's, that's going to work for an annuity. So that means that this looks like the right table. It's going to be present value of 1. Here's kind of the formula if we were to do it with a formula. But the whole point of the table is not to have to do that. This table is derived from the formula. And now we just need to pick out you know, our, our correct spot. And we know that we're going to use the market rate here because we're present valuing at the market rate, not the stated rate on the bond. 
but we think what's actually happening, what's the real rate in the market, which is something that we have to kind of guess at. We don't know that for sure. It's not on the bond, but it's going to be given in a problem. And we know that there's going to be uh, two years, but that means it's, it's semi-annual. So there's really four time periods, and this is going to be the other kind of confusing thing. We're not going to go two, two years out. We can't because there's going to be payments within that. And so we have to use four time periods. So the periods will be four, but they're not yearly periods. And that means we can't use the interest rate of 10% because that's 10% a year. So what we do then is take that 10% and divide it by two and 5%. So we're gonna have four time periods, two times two at 5%. And so if we know that, then we can just go, okay, four time periods at 5%, it's gonna be this amount. So 0.8227. So remember that 0.8227. That's what we're going to use. And then we can just go back up here and just type that in here. 0.8227. Now that may not be exact because of rounding, but it's four decimals out, so it's pretty it's pretty good. And I'll just put here that it's four periods at 0.05 or 5% on the table. That's where we're getting that number from. And so then we're just going to have present value of the bond face amount, the amount that we're going to pay at the end, is just going to be equal to the 100,000 times this number. We'll just multiply them out. There it is. So th the math, of course, here is very easy. The only difficult part is finding the table, finding the right number on the correct table. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to know the correct rate and the correct number of periods, which is different to the number of years and different than the yearly rate. We have to break it down to whatever period rate we have. Okay, so then we need the present value of the other piece, present value of annuity. Now the annuity, we could do this, remember, remember that there's four uh, $4,000 payments, four $4,000 payments. So we could present value each one of them using this uh, same method, not this number, that would be the number used for the last one, but we could go to this table and say, okay, well, it's gonna be uh, 5% for one year out times 4,000, 5% two years out times 4,000, five years, three years out, this number times 4,000, and five years, four years out, and then add them up. That would work possibly with four time periods, but if we had more than four time periods, it would be very tedious to do that way. Luckily, there's another table for us. It's the annuity table. So that's gonna be down here. And again, you know which table it is because it's gotta be something over one. In other words, what we're gonna do is take this 4,000 that we know how many payments there are, there's four of them, that would be 16,000. So what we need to do is multiply that 4,000 times something greater than one, but get to a result that's gonna be something less than 16,000. In other words, we're gonna multiply something that's gonna be greater than 4,000, obviously, and less than 16,000. That would be, that's, it has to be in there somewhere to be present value. And that's gonna be multiplying by something greater than one. So once we get the right table, we just do the same thing. We're gonna go 5% for a semi-annual rate, the yearly rate divided by two, and then we're gonna take it out for uh, how many time periods did we have? Two years, four time periods. So it's gonna be this 3.5460. So remember that number. So it's gonna be that number. I'll say, and we're just gonna go back over here and we're gonna take the, I'm gonna write that down before I forget it. Okay, so we'll, we'll put that number here. Actually, I'll put it underneath here. And we're gonna say, this is gonna be the interest per period, which is gonna be 4,000. We're gonna pay 4,000 four times for every six months, four periods, two years. And then the table, once again, uh, is gonna be, I'm gonna give the same in indicator, but just note that it's a different table. It's the annuity table that we're pulling this number from, but it's gonna be the same four periods at 5%. If we multiply that out then, we're gonna say the 4,000 times the 3.5460 and whatnot. And that's going to give us the present value of the interest payments, let's say. And then if we add those two up, then we're just going to say that we have the present value of the 100000 plus the present value of the interest payments. So it's issued then at, of course, a discount. And again, you can think about this. It should make, we're going to say, well, there's going to be 4,000 cash flow times four, four periods, plus 100,000 at the end, 116. That's how much cash flow that, that we're gonna have. But we're actually going to 
to present value that at only 96,454 because the 8% rate that we're, we're paying in interest is less than people could get elsewhere, which is the 10%. So what does this mean in terms of recording it? Well, if we were to record this then, uh, we're, we're gonna say that is cash affected? If we were to issue a bond, yeah, it's gonna go up. So I'm gonna say cash is gonna go up. And it's only gonna go up, however, for the 96,454, even though we're issuing a bond, the payable, the loan amount kind of, the liability, that we're gonna pay at the end of four time periods, two years, is 100,000. And the difference then, of course, is gonna be the discount, which I'll do with our plug formula, negative sum, and that's gonna be the 3,546, and that's gonna be the discount. So here's our journal entry. If we post that out then, cash of course is going up, bonds are going up, and then we have this discount. So we've got cash here, we got the bonds going up, and the bonds minus the discount is the carrying amount of the bonds. So again, note that when you, when you see this in book problems, they're probably going to ask you to either calculate this or to do the journal entry. And when doing the journal entry, they're probably gonna give you these two numbers just so they don't have a really long problem. So, uh, and then when they do this, they probably don't ask you for the journal entry because it'd be a really long problem or to post it. So just note that you often these two things are kind of in limbo uh, and separated in book problems and you gotta kinda know, if you know what they're doing and how to put them together, it makes more sense.